My name is Giles Smith, and welcome to our community. Good morning and welcome. Well, we'll get things started here. We've got a really large crowd and I want to make sure that we're respectful of your time on this Saturday and I sure do appreciate you coming out and spending some time with us this morning to raise some awareness around human trafficking. Who's ready to do that? I don't, I don't think that'll do. Are we ready to raise some awareness around human trafficking? That is so much better. We're going to wake up this morning, aren't we? Okay, so my name is Anne Michelle Ellis. I am the coordinator for the County of San Bernardino's Coalition Against Sexual Exploitation. Um, how many of you are familiar with CASE? Have come to a meeting, training, you're here today, you're part of the family. So thank you for coming. I appreciate okay, it. So we held our first walk in January of 2011. We had 75 people in attendance that year. Our first year out of the gate, I thought that was great. 75 people willing to show up on a Saturday and take a stand about human trafficking and raise some awareness. It was wonderful. Last year we had about 180 people here. So that was wonderful. And I see a lot of familiar faces out there. So thanks for coming back for, for another year. This year we had 850 people registered. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I'm a strong believer in the difference that one person can make in their communities by sharing information, by talking about these issues, by being an advocate for, advocate for a cause that they believe in. I believe the over, overwhelming positive response for the walk uh, this year is a de direct result of just that kind of effort amongst all of us. Can you imagine how much that number might grow if we all talked to 10 people this year? If we all talked to 50 people this year? If we all took our neighbors and our friends and our community members and our church members and the folks we work with and we took them aside for five minutes and said, hey, have you heard about human trafficking? It's happening here. This is what it looks like. This is what we can do and this is how we can get involved. What a huge impact that would make. And so what we have done in the district attorney's office is taken away their anonymity. If a person is convicted in San Bernardino County of soliciting a prostitute, under our Stop the John project, we now post their photograph, their booking photograph, their name, and, the, and their case number on our DA website for the entire world to see. And this has been a great deterrent effect, and other counties in Southern California are joining us, and they're starting their own similar projects. We're often taught in a public defender's office that in order for you to provide the best representation, you have to understand your client's story. And I was educated through my client's stories. And I recognized that I had a client who was labeled as a defendant. But in reality, my client was the victim. Uh, my client was an individual who was being pimped by another person, who was being uh, exploited by another person, who was being enslaved by another person. And so I and members of my team, we began to focus our advocacy in a courtroom in terms of the penal uh, sanctions that there shouldn't be any penal sanctions involved here. What we need is treatment. What we need to do is to provide a supportive network and in fact that these individuals should not even be a part of the criminal justice system because they are in fact the victims. Well, fast forward to today. Today we have case. We have case not only in San Bernardino County, but we have case throughout the nation. And case is symbolic of freedom and liberty and respect for all individuals. In the Public Defender's Office, we have a team of attorneys and social workers. Asha was uh, introduced earlier. Um, and what we do is we work in our Human Service Division. We work with young, uh, mainly girls, who have been victimized by human trafficking. 
and we seek to provide a supported network for them. I understand that today there's 36 clients. The Public Defender's Office represents 20 of the 36 clients, and we work consistently with 15 to 16 of those clients. And if we have to hold their hands as they reintegrate back into the community, then that's what we do. We hold their hands. And I want to applaud each and every one of you today for taking, I mean, Saturdays are very valuable days, especially if you work, but for taking the time to come out and to make a statement and to make a stance and to stand for the concept that this is wrong and liberty should extend to everyone and no one should be exploited sexually or physically. Thank you. So this morning we were honored to uh, hear Nick's story and um, and his pathway um, to recovery and where he is here today. But Nick is just among one of the many of survivors, uh, some who may be in the audience today. Um, he is one among the many who are still in the throes of crisis and of this crime. And that some of them may be in the audience here today. And what I would like for them to know, and for each of you to know, if you've taken Anne Michelle's challenge to go and speak to 10 other people to share the word is that we may not know your name, we may not know your faces, but we know that you're out there and that we're here to help. We may know that behind the makeup, behind the high heels, behind the false sense of maturity, that what you really are are scared and afraid young men and women, scared of homelessness, scared of hunger, scared of abandonment, scared of rejection. You may have dropped out of school, that you're traumatized, but we are here to help. I want to thank you all for coming out today and lending your support to raising awareness of the sorrow and the suffering that comes from human trafficking. Currently, the probation department has one dedicated officer, Officer Escobar, who works with 10 minors. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other minors, youth out there, who have not come to the attention of someone from one of these agencies who can help them, who can assist them, who can point them towards services. Through our amazing collaborative partnership with the other case agencies, we are able to serve about 30 to 40 minors in the county in total. But the scope of this problem is so much larger than that. Probation tries to be proactive wherever possible. We've implemented programming in our detention centers for juveniles to try to train and teach girls when someone's trying to recruit them, when someone's trying to pimp them into the life, and force them to do things they don't want to do so that they will be equipped to have the tools they need to refuse those overtures and to stay away from those people who would only victimize and harm them. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. What an incredible turnout. And you know, our job is to not only arrest and prosecute these folks, but also to raise a level of awareness. We've been a member of CASE since 2009, and most of you that are involved in this know Deputy Frank Navarro, who's on the steering committee for CASE. He does an outstanding job for us, so thank you, Frank. In addition, raising the level of awareness within the, the department was critical for us as well. We just completed an intensive training program for all the deputy sheriffs that just got done the last month. All of our folks are now trained on looking for these types of crimes and how to proceed with them. And then as you heard from Gary Roth, we just started the first San Bernardino County Human Trafficking Task Force with a detective from our department, an investigator from the DA's office, and we're making some incredible progress in discovering and prosecuting these crimes. So thank you all for being here, and we're committed to doing everything we can to help stop this as well. You know, we are here today to support a very important endeavor, and that's the fight against human trafficking. Um, this horrendous crime is affecting our communities, our, it's in our own backyards, and it's targeting our most vulnerable citizens, and that's our kids. And that includes our foster kids. And um, one, you know, a few things that the Department of Children and Family Services has been doing is we've been involved with CASE since its inception in 2009. 
Um, we are working right now very closely with our juvenile dependency court and our presiding judge in developing a girls court so that we can get to these girls before they can become victims. And, um, and we are working in collaboration again, as I said, with our dependency court and um, the court appointed special advocates, CASA. On behalf of Dr. Gary Thomas, our County Superintendent of Schools, as well as the entire San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools staff, I am here to reassure that we are here to commit to working in collaboration with the DA's office, with the sheriff, with CASE, and with all the other partners, as well as our 33 school districts in San Bernardino County, to ensure that every single one of our 414,000 students have whatever it takes to ensure that they're safe. That is our commitment to um, human trafficking, to bring awareness to our families, to our parents, to our educators. As a matter of fact, we have just been working on establishing three pilot programs in each of the regions of our county as a way to grow uh, awareness within our schools bringing in curriculum, training teachers so that they know what the signs are, what to look for, as well as all of our classified staff, whether they work on the playground, in the office, it's important for everyone because as we know, relationships are very important. And when one person takes, takes the time to get to know another and they see that there's a problem, that's how we raise awareness. And we can, again, on behalf of the county superintendent of schools and all of the staff and the 33 school districts in our county, we are here to stand behind all of you and create this awareness to um, fight this horrible crime. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Barbara Alejandre, and I'm assistant to the county superintendent, Dr. Gary Thomas, and I'm also the strategic planning coordinator for the San Bernardino County Schools. I'm here today to reassure the community of San Bernardino County that we are here to do whatever we possibly can to ensure the safety of our children. We are working in collaboration with the countywide vision to ensure that every child has the support from cradle to career. The two areas that we're looking at are academic and career readiness as well as personal and social readiness. And what I find is that the academic and career readiness component will occur if our children have the personal and social support that they need. Human trafficking is a horrible crime against children and we need to do whatever we can as community members, as educators, as all stakeholders to ensure that we help our children whenever an incident occurs and that we try to prevent incidents from occurring through awareness and proper training of all of our stakeholders so that our students can progress well along that continuum of academic and social readiness on both continuums and then we will have productive contributing citizens here in San Bernardino County and we will turn this county around. We will be a vital economy. So please support me in the crimes against children, specifically human trafficking. Thank you. And I think that our children and even our community, some of them are, are they don't believe that this can happen to them. I grew up on the west side in San Bernardino and I can tell you these things do happen. You have to have parents in the community involved to ensure that we're watching our kids, protecting them. When I grew up, I knew that Auntie B next door was going to take care of me when my grandmother wasn't looking or my mom was in school or my dad was in school or they were working. I, it was a community effort. Right. And that's what we need to get back to, is supporting our families. I don't live in San Bernardino anymore, I live in Ukaipa, but I'm still here in this county. But my heart is with those that are the most needy because we have to give back to our community. I have two teenage girls. I tell them every day about situations that occur in our county. And they don't believe me. Right. And then when something comes out in the paper, or I get a text, or I'm working with the sheriff's department, the DA's department, and I bring that to their attention, then it's like the realization, oh my god, it really is happening. Especially if it happens in our community. Because right. we're seeing that, oh it does. So nobody is exempt. Whether you live in poverty, whether you are very affluent, everybody is a, can be a victim. And we want to do what we can to prevent that. I'm with Family Assistance Program. 
we run Our House, which is a youth shelter here in San Bernardino County. And the reason I'm here is I heard a story that blew me away one time. A little girl, and she was arrested for prostitution. And the reason she was arrested was because they were saying that she's a prostitute. The problem was is that if that girl has sex with a 35-year-old man, he's a pedophile, and he goes to jail for it, and she gets counseling. But if he gave her 20 bucks after he was done having sex with her, now she's the criminal, and she's going to go to jail for it. And that's wrong. We need to fix that, and we're working on that. So now our organization is providing a safe place for those girls to live so they can come to our house. And we're also providing advocacy and counseling and helping that girl uh, escape, escape the life, and also escape being exploited and re-offended by the, our government and our, our law enforcement system. Fortunately, uh, District Attorney Ramos has been great about being open-minded and really rethinking that, and they're starting to really make a shift, and hopefully the rest of the state and the rest of the country will start following suit and will make that change so the girls will start being treated like victims, the victims they are, rather than cr criminals. The girls are guys, right? Girls are guys. We, we have very few guys in our county, um, but we do have a lot of girls. But we do come across some, some of the guys, too. And, and people sometimes think this is a victim crime. In fact, it's not at all. How can it be called victimless if you are destroying this girl's life? Right. How, how is a girl, how, how is anyone supposed to ever have a meaningful relationship with someone? Because relationship, you have a, an emotional relationship with the person that you love, and sex is a big part of that. And if you've taken sex and you've turned it into a commodity and a source of revenue, now you've taken one of the strongest, uh, strongest parts of a relationship and and destroyed it. And that, that person is now going to struggle for the rest of their life in having healthy, loving relationships. This event because it's something that we need to build as much knowledge and awareness of so that we can fight it. Um, it is a very serious and insidious problem and it's one that affects uh, every socioeconomic uh, layer uh, and unfortunately impacts younger women uh, at the age of 13 and above uh, in a greater extent than is even really conscionable. So, uh, it's something that we're hoping by raising awareness, by educating, by the cooperation with law enforcement, with our DA, with anything that the court can help by way of convening and assisting, that we can address that issue. So has this, has this uh, situation been uh, increasing over the last few years? Um, I think more awareness of it has been increasing uh, its uh, numbers. I think it has been increasing. Um, I think from things that uh, we've all read that it's becoming something that is subject to more gangs and more uh, introduction uh, as an alternative to substance abuse or in, in addition to substance abuse uh, to be able to traffic with uh, these young girls. So is, is the substance abuse piece uh, kind of like the catalyst to this kind of situation or is it a sense of helplessness that so, driving these young ladies and young men to do this? Some of it is. There's a high percentage of foster youth uh, that are involved and so some of it is a hopelessness, a lack of attachment, a lack of a significant involvement with someone who could help them out of that situation. Uh, if you could say one thing that parents could do to maybe uh, reduce the likelihood of their child taking this path, what would it be? I think from, from my perspective, it would be to form a significant and a loving relationship with your, with your daughter that would enable you to be able to communicate with your daughter. Um, as well as being careful uh, in terms of age appropriate uh, association and friendship. been trafficked. Uh, 17, I ran away from home and was involved uh, with a young gentleman who, you know, sold me a dream basically, played the whole boyfriend role, and um, offered me something that I felt I wasn't getting at home. You know, offered me the love, and then I needed a way to support myself, and, 
you know, that was kind of brought about. And in the beginning, it was for him and I. Yeah. It was for our survival. And then all of a sudden, it started, you know, the beatings came along. The money wasn't right. And, um, you know, it just, it just progressed from there. Um, you know, involving other girls in the life and having me, you know, recruit on my own. And, you know, it wasn't something that I would normally have done. But because of my circumstances and because of not having anywhere to turn to from there, I just had to keep on with it. So what kind of got you into the life? Was it because of uh, lack of love kind of feeling at home? Or was it I wanted to be grown? Or just I, I, this is my man and, and now we're trying to make it together? Or what kind of... I, I kind of, I it was on a wanting to be grown aspect of it all. And then once I was in it and was arrested for it, then having to go home and face that whole, you know, the, the shame basically right. with all my family knowing and then also having that taste of freedom and having to come back, you know, to, to rules. And I didn't want that. Right. So I left again. And, you know, I didn't see the dark side to everything. Yeah, I jail, but I mean, what, it was a slap on the wrist yeah. and then I was, you know, I was let go. Uh, it's still kind of a, a newer uh, department that I created in, in my office. Uh, we now have a, a human trafficking uh, prosecutor, vertical prosecution unit. And it started a little over three years ago. And I was reading an article in the newspaper by uh, a reporter um, com uh, that wrote uh, commentary, uh, Wes Hughes, for the Sun newspaper. And, you know, he challenged somebody to step up and uh, help some of these girls that are being trafficked. And I had a chief deputy back then, Karen Bell, who's since retired, and another lawyer in uh, my West End division that were talking to me about that as well. So it kind of opened my eyes. I made the calls, and, you know, I called my good friend uh, Kamala Harris, who at the time was the DA in San Francisco. Uh, she's now our attorney general, California attorney general, of course. And she told me that uh, this is a big problem. Uh, across not only across our state but across the country and we as DAs need to step up and we did and I made some calls we put together a group um, the first thing that came out of that was a case coalition against sexual exploitation uh, as partners uh, from different departments throughout the county and they do an excellent job uh, really helping the young girls that are being trafficked of course, created the suppression unit so we could do a better job of holding these human traffickers responsible uh, and training law enforcement officers, etc. Then, then did something to stop the demand. You know, uh, we have the Stop the John project, where if you are convicted in my county of solicitation uh, of prostitution, uh, we will um, put your picture and, and birth date on our web page because we want to deter this from happening in the future. Uh, and then, final, the final piece that we're working on now is a San Bernardino County Human Trafficking Task Force uh, that's going to be administered and driven uh, by the Sheriff's Department. So another great partnership with Sheriff John McMahon and, and uh, their commitment to that. So uh, we're taking some big steps. Um, we also know that um, the gangs are getting involved in human trafficking so we're, we're training our gang prosecutors as well um, but we want to make sure that um, we are ready to um, take care of this horrendous uh, problem if you think about it these young girls have been uh, victims all their lives a lot of them even uh, victims when they were younger and um, as I indicated before when we were talking about President Lincoln it's it's modern slavery um, and we're going to put an end to that well, these women uh, are on the front lines, working with commercially sexually exploited youth on a daily basis. This is not easy work, and yet they do it with such grace and compassion. I'm honored to work alongside them on a daily basis. We lost a great human being this last year, Nelson Mandela. Though he wasn't necessarily known as an anti-human trafficking advocate per se, he fought for the freedom and equality of all people. I'd like to share a quote with you from him. For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. He understood the responsibility we all have to not only take care of ourselves and our families, but to respect and enhance the freedom of others, people in our community. And that is exactly why CASE was formed and why we, why we all gather here today. 
Those who experience trafficking in all of its many forms are not free. Author Kevin Bales, who wrote the, the book The Slave Next Door, I'd encourage you to read that book, it's called A Slave Next Door, calls it the chain around the brain. And I think it's an accurate description of what survivors of trafficking go through. The first step in addressing any issue as a society is awareness that it is happening. I applaud all of you for being willing to carry on the legacy of Mr. Mandela, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and many others, both known and unknown, who have made fighting for the freedom of others their life's work. Let me share with you a few statistics, and I encourage you to share these with others. Though no accurate statistics exist in the United States about children who are commercially sexually exploited, experts estimate that anywhere between 100,000 to 300,000 American children are exploited each year in our country. Human trafficking is a $32 billion industry. Do we even know what that looks like? I don't even know what $32 billion looks like. That's huge. It's ranking at the second largest source of profits internationally for organized crime. There are 27 million slaves in the world today. Today. That's more than at any time in human history. The average age that a young person is trafficked in the United States? 12 to 13. Average age. These are startling statistics if you haven't heard them before. Maybe even a little startling if you have heard them. We cannot do anything to combat this issue without first raising awareness about its ex existence, and that is exactly what we're here to do today. So thank you for your commitment to raising awareness about human trafficking and for taking a stand against trafficking in San Bernardino County. Thank you very much. <laughs>